Hello, my name is Emma Fawcett and I'm an independent Stampin' Nails demonstrator based in Newton Abbey, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Thank you so much for joining me today on Emma's Crafty Space. So I'm continuing on using the Curvy Celebration Suite for this project. So you can see that I've used the DSP, some of the stamped images and the die cut images. Um, same as this, this is one of the dies in the set as well. Um, and although I have used something additional, which is the Ornate Frames dies, and you can just see there how lovely they are nested inside each other. And I've kept with the colour schemes of the suite, uh, shaded spruce, Sahara sand and cherry cobbler. So we'll just make a wee start on this. Okay, so the first thing I did was I cut my vellum to 10 and a half centimeters by 29 centimeters. And it just means then that everything is equal and I don't have to worry about 0.25s of um, centimeters. So it just means I know I have to fold that or crease it. But with it being vellum, I would definitely err on the side of doing just uh, crease yourself rather than burn it or scoring it and creasing it because um, the vellum could then break a little bit. But then with it having it 14 and a half centimetres, I just know that the, um, the DSP and all the um, sheets for the inside are going to be 14 and a half centimetres. And I don't need to worry about being um, 0.25 of centimetres. So it just works out a bit easier for your measurements. Next step is um, I've already pre-cut this. So with this one here is just a scrap, but I have actually just cut this to 14.5 six centimeters and it just means then that I've got a little bit of grace and a little bit of a hang over here because it's easier to trim off whereas if you cut it exact or just shy of it it means then that your vellum is going to be longer than your um, fronts and your inserts so it just means then you've got that little bit to play with and it's easily trimmed off. Now if you're making quite a lot of these I'm just going to move my camera slightly. You'll notice here on my grid paper in this corner that I have um, marked um, at two and three quarters of an inch and here one and a half of one and a half inches and it just means then that I can use my grid paper as a guide of where I want my um because I wanted it to be two and three quarters high by one and a half high here and then it gives you that nice gradient but for the curvy one I'm actually just going to set this down and the reason I'm going to cut it um I'm going to cut the two on nested on top of each other because it means then they are mirrors of each other for the inside, especially with it having that polka dot detail on the die. So I'm just going to be setting this down like that. OK, so you can do whatever gradient you want. You can have it steep or you can have it more flattened, flattened out. So I'm going to be cutting mine like that. So I'm just going to go off camera and I'll do it on the big shot. So now I have that edge cut. If you look at this here, then you can see then it's in there as well. So I'm just going to get a pokey tool and poke all that through. And it means now those two are mirrors of each other whenever I go then to put that on the inside of my card. OK, so now you can see that they are exact mirrors of themselves. So whenever I put that on the front, that is just going to slot in there behind and they will be identical to each other. OK. So it just means then that everything's nice and neat. So now I'm going to go back to my original marker over here and I am going to do the peak of the hill is going to be in line with my two and three quarters line there. OK, so I'm just going to mark this here. And then I will put it into my trimmer and cut at that line. Make sure it's completely straight. Okay. And do the same with your card. So line those two up. Okay, and you have those completely even with each other. Okay, so you're going to do repeat the same steps for the other side of your card. So it's going to be this side here and the back because obviously vellum is quite flimsy. So it needs um, a little bit of support. So again, you're going to get your card. It's already cut at 
14.6 and you're going to get two sheets together sandwich together and run them through for in the same way okay so once you have all your pieces cut so you can see that they all match up perfectly um so basically if you get one done properly and then just try and use that for that first one as a template then it all should just fall into place and work out okay for you now i am going to put this one in first just because um I want to get it not in too far into here because you don't want to put extra pressure on that vellum there in that um, crease. So I'm going to put that in. And what I was saying to you earlier, you can see how that just is just over a little bit, but that's easier easier trimmed. You'd rather it was a wee bit over, over to trim off than too short. So um, I'm just going to put this one in first. So this one, the glue is going to go onto the front and it's going to get stuck onto this side. So don't be absolutely saturating this. Um, the vellum will go wrinkly and it'll just be a bit of a mess. So just very, very thinly. Use your spreader end of your Tombow um, so you're getting nice, even glue in there. Okay. And I am going to set this down to the bottom edge. And then, so you can see that there's a bit of resistance there with the vellum. I'm just going to give it a wee crease just to um, make sure that this is going to go in okay. Okay. Make sure it's flush to that bottom edge. Vellum can be a wee bit hard to work with, but I do think it's definitely worth the fussing about with it. Okay, so that is my first layer in. So whenever I open that, just give it a good press. A bit of glue there. Okay, so now then you can use this as a guide to where that's going to go. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this little bit that's over shot a little bit. I'm going to trim that off now. Make it flush to that edge. Okay, so again, now you are going to put this one on. Again, not too much. Use your spreader. Note to self, this is your spreader end and this is for finer work. Okay, so again, marry these two up now. Okay. Okay, you just might need to move it about a little bit, but with using the wet glue, it gives you that time to do that. Okay, so that is those completely perfectly married up. So again, you've got this little bit to trim off the corner. And sometimes along this bottom edge, no matter how good you are at your um, instructions and measuring out, it will run off. But um, later on, when everything, everything's put together, you can just run it through your trimmer. Or um, you might need a, a guillotine of some sort just to give you a nice, clean, crisp edge. So this is going to go here. And I'm just making sure that it marries up as well along that top edge. Okay. So I am going to, again, very, very thin coating of my glue. I'm not going right to the edge because I'm going to tuck wee trees down in behind. I'll do that once it's... But I'll do that once it is um, attached. Okay, so I'm just going to... Go like this and I'm just going to close this over to make sure that it's not that it's all in perfect line which it is so you can see there it's run off a little bit but don't worry we can get that trimmed off okay and then just while there's still a bit of tackiness in here I have I cut three of these little shapes I'll show you the die that I've used for these I've done three of those 
and the die I used was that little one there. Okay, so I am just going to nestle these down inside and the brow of that hole. Okay, so just a tiny little glue, bit of glue. And tuck them down in behind that. And because there isn't glue to the edge, it should be easy enough for you to get those wee trees positioned in there. Now you don't want glue up to the tip, the top of them because you don't want to see it on the reverse side of your card. You just want it just a little bit to hold them at the very base. Okay. And your last one and this is just to make the inside of the card a little bit more interesting because you have your pretty dsp on the front and it means then whenever your cards close you can just see a silhouette of them there on the other side so it's a pretty neat way just to make it a bit more interesting and then your last section is we are going to add this so like that your glue is going on this side Nice and thinly. And then just marry it up with that. Okay. As you can see now. Make sure everything's nice and pressed down and stuck. Okay, so the last thing um, to do is to make this gorgeous little tag. So I have already pre-cut out my ornate frames. I'll just bring them onto the shot here to show you them. So you can see there's plenty of little bits to come out of this. So if you use your little brush off your pokey tool, Okay, so now we are going to just decide where you want to put that. So you can have it up here if you want to hide your trees so that whenever you do open your card that they are a bit of a surprise. But I think I'm just going to have mine down a little bit lower. Just be careful because some of the little pieces of it are very intricate and um, a little bit fragile. So whenever you're working with it, you can see there that we curl there, so we bit delicate. So I'm just setting that down there like that. Just decide where to centralize it. Okay, now this one here is really cute in that you can see that that just nests inside that perfectly. So I'm going to stop my greeting, which is Merry Christmas. And I'm going to stamp it in early espresso. Just find early espresso a really good color for stamping greetings because it's just a little bit softer than black you could use the sahara sand just to be completely in keeping with your color scheme but i thought it needed just something a bit bolder especially with having the shaded spruce and um, dsp it just needed something to give it a bit of make it stand out a little bit okay so just taking the backs off and just position this You'll see that there is grooves for that just to be nested inside that. Okay, um, I have already pre-cut these little sprigs using the dye from the sweet and they're cut in shaded spruce as well. So I'm just going to use them. Use my Tombow again just to stick the base of these because I want them to kind of sit up off the card. Just tuck them in underneath your white label. And you can position these as wherever you want them to go and have as many or as little as you want. Um, the most time consuming part of this card is probably measuring out and getting your positioning for the curve of your hills. But whenever I finish, we'll put the two together and you can see if you think it's worth it to just spend that little bit extra time to use that nice curved die. OK, 
Okay. The last thing is our bow. And I'm going to use mini dimensionals on those. And I'm going to put them at the bottom of the bow loop. And it means then that that will support the bow on the bottom and the top of it can just rest up along the edges of the label. That is it. Now, if you wanted to add a little bit more sparkle to that, you could then do a wee bit of Wink of Stella around the bow. Now, you can see that has ran off. If you feel like you're good at using your snips and cutting in a straight line, you can go along that edge and just get your edges all completely nice and neat. Or if you prefer just to use a guillotine or your trimmer. That is it, pretty much finished. So you can see them both now side by side. I personally prefer the one with the curved edge, but um, this one definitely would be a lot easier if you were just starting off or just maybe more of a novice crafter. Um, this one is definitely will take you a bit more time because you're trying to marry up all your um, curved edges to make sure that they're all completely neat and, and flowing in the right direction. But if you don't mind that they're going to be offset, we'll share a little hill kind of coming up in the background and in there wouldn't be such a bad thing anyway. But um, I really would love you to have a go at them and let me know how you find it. Um, just remember that I put all the products that I've used in the comment on the video or in the description. And there's a link there to my online store, which is open 24-7. If you wish to order anything, that would be great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care. Bye-bye.